Hi everyone, it's Kunihiro. Thank you for coming back to my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make tonkatsu, a Japanese pork cutlet, step by step. So let's begin. Okay, here are the ingredients for today's tonkatsu. Here I have two slices of pork loin chops. These are pre-sliced pork loin chops you can find at any supermarket. The thickness of the meat is about 3 quarters of an inch or 2 centimeters. Please make sure to take them out of the fridge 20 minutes before deep frying and bring them to room temperature. If the meat is cold, it will cause uneven cooking of the meat. And for seasoning the pork, I use salt and black pepper. And for the breading, I have 100 grams of panko breadcrumbs, 100 grams of all-purpose flour, one large egg and one teaspoon of cooking oil. Today I'm using canola oil, but any cooking oil is fine. By the way, I'm using shirakiku panko breadcrumbs today. I recommend using panko with bigger bits, because bigger bits make tonkatsu crispier. And here I have half of a cabbage. We usually serve shredded cabbage on the side of tonkatsu. And here is the tonkatsu sauce. The product's name is Budok Tonkatsu Sauce, it's a famous tonkatsu sauce in Japan, and you can find it at any Asian grocery store in the US. But if you don't have an Asian grocery store near you, you can combine these ingredients and make tonkatsu sauce yourself. So here are 2 tablespoons of ketchup, 2 tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, 1 tablespoon of sugar, 1 tablespoon of water, and 1 lemon wedge. I'm going to squeeze juice out of this lemon and add it to the sauce. First, put all these ingredients into a small pot. And heat it over low heat. And keep mixing it until the sugar dissolves completely. Once the sugar dissolves, the sauce will thicken this much. Then transfer it to a cup and let it cool down to room temperature and it's ready to serve. Next, we are going to prepare shredded cabbage. First, please cut the cabbage in half. Then remove the core of the cabbage. And separate the cabbage in half, since it's too tall to cut. Next, press the cabbage against the cutting board and make it flat. Then cut it very thinly. Please make sure to tuck your left hand fingers under the knuckles so that you won't cut yourself. At this time, the side of my knife is always touching my knuckles, but I'm making sure the blade never goes up any higher than that. Put all the cabbage slices into a bowl. And cut the inner layers of the cabbage in the same way. Then after slicing, soak the cabbage in cold water for 1 minute. By doing this, you can crisp up the texture of the cabbage. But if you soak it too long, it will start to lose some of the vitamins. So 1 minute later, please drain the water well. In the end, shake off the excess water and the shredded cabbage is done. Cover it with plastic and keep it in the fridge until tonkatsu is ready. Now that we are done with the shredded cabbage and tonkatsu sauce, let's start making tonkatsu. First, please break an egg into a bowl and beat it well. 
until the yolk and egg white are entirely mixed. This egg will act as the glue that holds the panko to the pork. But if you don't mix it well, panko will not adhere to the pork evenly. So please beat it well. Okay, that's good. Now add one teaspoon of cooking oil to the beaten egg. And mix it well. The cooking oil will act as the additional glue so that the panko will never separate from the pork after deep frying. After mixing, your beaten egg has to be as smooth as this. Next, we are going to prepare the pork. The first thing we do is wipe off the moisture on the pork with a paper towel. If the pork is wet, you can coat the pork with the flour evenly in the next step. And it will cause the tonkatsu crust to come off. So please don't skip this part. And the next thing we do is to make shallow incisions on the sinew on the side of the pork. By making shallow incisions on the sinew, you can prevent the pork from curling up when deep frying. Once done, your pork will look like this. And next, spear the meat with a fork many times to tenderize it. Some people hit it with the back of the knife to tenderize it, but it makes the meat thinner, which I don't like. So I always use a fork. Please do the same to the other side as well. And next, we are going to season the pork. So please sprinkle two pinches of salt and one pinch of black pepper over the pork. And rub it in. Repeat on the other side as well. Once we are finished seasoning the pork, we will move on to breading. So please arrange these items on the counter, starting from the left. All purpose flour first, the beaten egg next, and the panko last. First, coat all sides of the pork with all purpose flour. It's very important to let the pork wear lots of flour at this time. Also make sure the flour gets into where you made shallow incisions earlier. Then dust off the excess flour like this. By dusting off the excess flour, your pork will be evenly coated. Your pork will look like this. Now drop the pork into the beaten egg and coat all the sides of the pork with the beaten egg. I'm using a chopstick during this process because I don't want to leave big fingerprints on the pork. The panko will not adhere firmly to where you left fingerprints. Plus, keeping your hands dry makes the job so much easier. And the same as the flour, let the pork wear lots of beaten egg. And drop the excess egg like this. And put the pork over the panko. Then cover the pork with lots of panko. and press it down gently, so it adheres to the pork firmly. Turn the pork over, soften the panko a little, cover the pork with panko entirely, and press it down again. That's it. Please put it on a dry plate and set it aside. Next, please get a large pot and fill it with cooking oil up to 3 cm. Slightly more than the entire pork will submerge. Then turn on the heat to medium and bring the temperature up to 170 degrees Celsius. Once the oil is getting hot, please lower the heat to medium low. 
otherwise the oil temperature will exceed 170 degrees very quickly. By the way, I don't use a thermometer when I cook at home. So to check the temperature of the oil, I wet chopsticks with cold water, wipe off the water with a paper towel well, dip the tips of chopsticks in the oil, and look at the bubbles coming out of the chopsticks. At 170 degrees, you'll see many teeny tiny bubbles come out of the chopsticks like this. You'll see a lot fewer bubbles at 160, and at 180, you'll see bigger bubbles. So now, please put the pork into the oil gently. After you put the pork into the oil, the temperature of the oil drops to about 160 degrees. But don't turn up the heat at this point. The temperature will go up slowly over medium-low heat. My plan is to start cooking at 160 degrees and slowly bring it up to 170 degrees in 3 minutes. Then raise the heat a little and brown the coating for 2 minutes. So for the first minute, please don't touch the tonkatsu. We have to wait until the coating is set. After one minute, when the coating is set, gently move the tonkatsu like this. Doing this allows the temperature of the oil will be even, and the tonkatsu will be heated evenly. And after one minute and a half, turn the tonkatsu over. I'm adjusting the heat between medium low and low heat, ensuring the oil temperature never exceeds 170 degrees Celsius. Then 3 minutes later, turn the tonkatsu over again and turn up the heat just a little bit. From this point on, I will start browning the tonkatsu at the higher temperature. I'm aiming at 175 to 180 degrees Celsius. After 4 minutes, turn the tonkatsu over one last time and deep fry for another one minute. And after 5 minutes, take the tonkatsu out, shake off the oil, and put it on the cooling rack. and let the tonkatsu rest for 4 minutes. At this moment, the core of the tonkatsu is still slightly uncooked. So let the remaining heat cook the tonkatsu entirely. By doing this, the pork will stay juicy. And please make sure to stand up the tonkatsu like this during those 4 minutes. This way, the excess oil will drain only from a side of the tonkatsu so that the crust will stay crispy. While waiting for tonkatsu, please clean up the oil. Otherwise, the hot oil will keep cooking the fallen panko and darken the oil. And later, when the oil is cooled down, you can strain it and keep it in the fridge for a week. And I always keep these leftover flour and panko in zipper bags and store them in the freezer. And I reuse them whenever I want. And for the leftover beaten egg, I always add it to my miso soup. I know it contains a little bit of canola oil, but it's better than wasting it. Quickly, I'll show you when to add the egg to the miso soup. So this is the miso soup I made ahead of time. I'll bring it to a boil right before serving. And once it starts boiling like this, I add the beaten egg to the soup. Like this. The egg will set right away, so turn off the heat. Give a light mix, and that's it.
Next, please take the shredded cabbage out of the fridge and decorate it on a plate. And once the tonkatsu has rested for 4 minutes, it's time to cut it. As you can see, the pork is still juicy and slightly pink in the center. That is exactly what I wanted. Plus, the panko is attached to the pork very firmly. Finally, lean the tonkatsu against the shredded cabbage. Like this. And your delicious tonkatsu is done. Please enjoy it with tonkatsu sauce. And please use your favorite dressing for the shredded cabbage. I always enjoy it with soy sauce. Alright, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed watching today's video. So if you did, please give me a like and leave a comment below. Also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you soon in my next video. Bye bye.